Good evening, my name is Jason Debley. Tonight's whiskey review is a Canadian whiskey, Crown Royal, probably the most famous Canadian whiskey brand available in the United States, Canada, and throughout the world, owned by Diageo. Now, with this Crown Royal, it's a uh, they call it a limited release. It's part of the Noble Collection, which was launched in 2016. And each year they come out with a new release. So for 2020, making it the fourth release, it is uh, the cask, French oak cask finish. We have it right here. Comes in the velvet bag. 40% alcohol by volume. No age statement and artificial color is involved. 750 milliliter format and price point in Canada, $100 or $99.99 and in the US between $55 and $65. So not cheap for a non-age statement, 40% alcohol by volume whiskey release. Cork stopper. We're going to try it in a Glencairn glass. You will recall that this was the second in a flight of three whiskeys that I did for a whiskey tasting a few weeks ago. And the first one was Few Whiskey, a small batch craft distiller outside of Illinois, outside of Chicago, uh, Evanston I think it was. Then this was next in the flight. And then finally Talisker, which needs no introduction. So initially the wood management of Crown Royal is undoubtedly in ex-bourbon casks and then this goes to French oak. This is not uh, the first time Diageo has done this with the Crown Royal brand. Uh, a few years ago, six, seven years ago, they had what was called Crown Royal cask number 16 which uh, aged Crown Royal in French oak and it was very good. I really liked it even though the alcohol by volume was 40% and there was no age statement. With this whiskey you're getting uh, on the nose oak, vanilla, a little bit of mint, it's sweet you know and it's distinctly Crown Royal on the nose. So you get that signature nose. It's, it's good. On the palate, you're greeted by some lightly spiced rye, which transitions to barley, sweet wheat, and corn. There's definitely a caramel, butterscotch quality to mid-palate. It's a fairly light whiskey. It's not too bold, not too brash. It's balanced. Totally inoffensive like most Canadians. On the finish you're left with some dry oak bit of a bitter black tea in a good way, kind of a tannic note. Cinnamon, kosher salt. The white, the finish you got a bit of white pepper. It's a good whiskey, but it's not worth a hundred dollars in the Canadian marketplace. And I don't think it's worth $65 in the American marketplace. It's it just it's not special. It's it's lacking something and at that high price point you should have a higher alcohol by volume like 43% would give it a bit more complexity. It's not a whiskey that I consider to be complex. And it should be for the price. Um, notwithstanding price, I would say this is a good Canadian whiskey, not great, not spectacular, not below average, but when you match that price with it, you're not getting good value for money. Um, for that reason, I wouldn't buy it again, unless I got it cheap or somebody was just passing it around. 
Not exceptional, little disappointed with this. And at the whiskey tasting, it was the least popular whiskey. The most popular was Talisker, and then Few was also very popular, the Few whiskey. But the Crown Royal was the least. Now it came second after the Few, which was a lot more robust rye whiskey. Maybe in hindsight, I should have done the more milder whiskey first. The Crown Royal, then gone to Few, and then gone to Talisker. But notwithstanding that, this whiskey is a little bit boring, unexceptional. It delivers your classic Canadian balance and key flavor notes, but no sizzle to the steak. Thanks again for tuning in, and next week it'll be Talisker. Well, actually in two weeks, because I'm going on a cruise down to Miami. Take care.